So welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to be here today with you all because I'm talking about one of my favorite topics and that is perfumes and specifically natural perfumes. I have a really exciting box to share with you from the Boxwalla. You maybe have already seen this on Instagram if you follow Boxwalla or Sigil Scent uh, on Instagram. But what the box wall is doing, this is a special box. This is not a subscription box. This is a one-time only box. And you get this cute little box filled with four samples from Sigil Scent. And this is what it looks like. And what the situation is, is you pay $89.95 for the one-time box. You get the four samples. You get to play with them, experiment with them, decide which one you like the best, and then you get a full bottle, or you get to choose the full bottle that you want to get. I believe the full bottle retails for $120. So this is a fantastic deal. But not only is it a fantastic deal, it is a great way to decide which perfume you want to purchase. So let's go ahead and jump in here and I recently watched Patrick he's the creator of Sigil Scent I recently watched him on a live with the Boxwalla and I really loved how he described working with natural essences he does not do anything where he's like bashing on synthetics he says that he is not uh, into any kind of fear mongering he's not anti-synthetic he's just very pro naturals and how he describes working with them and th this really struck me he said that naturals feel very romantic supple and fleshy and I would agree with that in terms of how these perfumes really wear on your skin they're just very they feel very alive um, so let's go ahead and just jump right in of course you know you get your box here as usual Lavanya has created a wonderful pamphlet here describing all of the perfumes and the notes and her experience with them and how they make her feel and some of Patrick's information so it's a really great information card I, of course, have taken some notes as well, and I'm going to start with Solucio, and this is what, you can just see what the sample looks like and get an idea of the, the color of the perfume. And Solucio is very buoyant, and that's the word that Patrick used in his, um, in the live with Boxwalla. And I would agree with that because in my notes, I said that it's very bright and effervescent because there's lime and verbena in the top notes. Um, and then what's interesting, and I did put this on my skin maybe 20 minutes ago, and then as you get into the heart note, I feel like you really start to get a sense of the chaparral that is in this. And the deal with that, and the reason why Patrick used it is because he wanted to give that feeling of like the dryness um, just before it starts to rain. So that idea of petrichor. And I really feel like he's done such a beautiful job of balancing sort of those upper, like really bright, bubbly, citrusy notes. And then into the heart, we get a little bit more dry, feeling like you are in the desert. And then along with that dryness is also kind of like this steamy vapor. And I was really curious about that because I was wondering how he achieved that. And I I do believe it is from the Cipriol, which is an essence that's new to me, but how it is described is it's leathery, uh, sort of like a balmy vetiver. And then I, I can't remember where, I think maybe it was on the Base Notes website. Somebody described Cipriol as sort of having like a sterile air or a white noise kind of a feeling. And even though that might sound kind of negative, I definitely get what that person is saying because there is kind of that like clean musk sense to this. and just sort of like this background sort of vapor. It's really hard to describe. It's not an aquatic um, perfume. I would not call it aquatic in any way, but there is this interplay between the kind of like that dryness of the chaparral, but yet sort of like the vapor that's coming off of it if it's been raining. I don't know, it's just very, very interesting. There's also labdanum in here, but I don't really get a sense of too much labdanum. Sometimes labdanum can be really sweet and almost powdery, but I don't really get that sense um, from this too much. I just think it's sort of there residing to help uh, maybe uplift kind of that musky feeling. There's also cypress in here, which is going to have like a sappy, vegetal, woody um, aspect to it. And then when it dries down, I wrote down in my notes that it kind of has like a chewy labdanum feeling and that is sort of like um i don't know if you've ever smelled oud before but i always feel like when i smell oud it kind of has like a chewy feeling and that's kind of the feeling that i get with this dry down of solucio it's just it's really complex in that it's not linear it doesn't stay the same the the whole way through your experience of the perfume it kind of ebbs and flows and changes and i really love it i feel like this is probably my favorite 
because of that unique, uh, I think it's like I said, from the Cipriol, kind of that unique, like dry, musky, yet vapory vibe that comes from this perfume. It's, it's really, it's really unique and really special and also very wearable in my opinion. Uh, next we're going to move to Amor Fati and that is the love of fate. And this is what the perfume color looks like. Now I did bring these little cotton squares so I could spray it on here. And then right off the bat, you get a very piney sense from Amor Fati. There's bergamot and pine. So if you really like pine fragrances, you would probably enjoy the top notes of this perfume. There's also some patchouli in here, and it, I believe it must be like a very high quality aged patchouli because there's also a little bit of a minty aspect to this. And I know that with like really high quality aged patchouli there, you do get like a really deep kind of minty scent from that. So I feel like that's present in, he present in here as well. There's also Galbanum in here, which is very sharp and green. And then there's Palo Santo. So I feel like those two, once you get into the heart, those are also really well balanced as well. Kind of having like the sharp green of the Galbanum combined with the kind of like woodiness of, and, and it's kind of like a medicinal wood um, is the best way I can think to describe the scent of Palo, Palo Santo. And they interplay really well together. Apparently there's also Neroli tincture in here. I don't really get too much of that. For me, it really feels kind of incensey in a way, but on the same hand, it's not like super smoky. Um, just really, really beautiful. So I feel like if you like kind of piney, minty, green, combined with a little bit of the Palo Santo in there, this would be a really good one um, for you to try. Or of course you should just try all four of them and then decide which one you like the best. We're gonna move on to Prima Materia. This one, if I'm remembering correctly, Patrick said it is his favorite, kind of his baby. He really loves the masculine energy that he feels like this one puts forth. This one is a little bit deeper, as you can see in color. So this one for me is really all about vetiver and neroli, especially in the top notes. I do get much more of a sense of neroli in this one than I do with the Amor Fati. And I do believe there's the tincture of neroli in here. There's also absolute and essential oil. So a lot of neroli going on here but it's not hyper floral at all because the vetiver is like kind of um, nutty and grassy and rooty. So th those two really balance each other out a lot. Uh, there's also oak moss and white sage tincture in here as well. So it is very smoky and resinous. And if I remember correctly, he does categorize this as a sheep rub, probably because of the oak moss and the vetiver in here. On the dry down, it is a little bit ambery for me, but it's not overly sweet. It's just sort of like a really uh, gentle labdanum with powdery vetiver. So really, really lovely as well. I think if you are a vetiver fan, this one would really speak to you. And of course, if you like the cheaper category and perfume, then this probably would be the one you would go for. So the next one we have here is Anima Mundi, and that is World Spirit. And according to uh, Patrick in the live he did with Boxwalla, he described this as a floral for all humans. So it's very unisex. There are a lot of flowers in here. There's rose, jasmine, and tuberose, but I would classify this as like a very spicy, woody floral. It's not, um, nothing comes bursting forth in terms of like a white tropical floral. It's not really heady like that. It's more steeped in uh, aromatic and herbaceous scents rather than like a tropical vibe. And then the wood in here is from Hinoki, which is a beautiful wood. I really like that as well. Uh, it also, to me, for some reason, I get a little bit of a soapy vibe from this. I don't know if that's from the Immortelle because Immortelle can be pretty sweet. So all in all, I would say this is probably my least favorite. I think it's, it's beautiful and I highly recommend you all try it and just to get your take on it. But I think of, of the four, this one is, like I said, it's probably my least favorite, but it is still a very beautifully constructed, like I said, spicy, woody, floral, very interesting, but probably the one I'm least likely to be drawn to. So if you are interested in this box, I highly recommend it because I think it's just a fantastic way to um, to experience uh, sigil scent. And, the, and these are all new releases, by the way. This is sort of like sigil 2.0. So anyway, highly recommend this. I think I'm probably gonna get Solucho, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, so the next brand I'm going to move on to is Ojai Wild. 
And even though these are body oils, I'm incorporating them into this perfume video because the scents are just fantastic. They, they feel like perfume for me. And she created them, I believe, to layer with her colognes because the colognes are, um, they're, they're pretty short-lived. They don't last for very long. So these are going to help the longevity. And I love these boxes, as I've mentioned before in previous Ohio Wild reviews. I love how um, there's this little tab here so you don't accidentally rip this beautiful box. So the body oils that she has created are for pink peppercorn and white sage leaves. So let's talk about white sage leaves first. And the sage in here is a sage extract. It's organic and grown and harvested on their own farm. I really appreciate the fact that this is homegrown. They're, create, they're growing it on their own land, so they're not contributing to the risk of it becoming extinct or endangered. So I really do appreciate that. Uh, in here is Haitian vetiver, guaiac wood, jasmine, vintage lemongrass, marshmallow root extract, there's uh, macadamia nut oil, shea butter, rose hip seed oil, and jojoba. And these run $65 for 100 ml. So you get a lot of product and a little bit goes a long way. And for me with white sage, it is all about the sage. It is really a very sagey experience. So I don't get a whole lot of jasmine from here. I get a little hint of the lemongrass and maybe a little bit of the wood, but it's just such a beautiful sage and, I, and it layers really well with the white sage leaves uh, uh, cologne that she creates as well. And kind of similarly with the sigil scent uh, perfumes, which are very you know, aromatic and herbal and kind of give you that feeling of you know, being in California out in the sun. This also obviously being from Ojai, which is you know, very warm, warm climate in California. This also has that same vibe as well really love the sage the white sage leaves and it's like i said if this is a favorite uh, essence of yours i highly recommend that and then we'll move on to pink peppercorn and what's in here is jojoba pink peppercorn and that is also one of their own extractions from their farm macadamia nut seed uh nut seed oil sweet almond oil coconut oil there's gardenia flower extract in here rose hip oil evening primrose oil two kinds of jasmine bergamot black currant absolute oak moss absolute and rosemary co2 so i'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this on my hand and jana sheehan who is the creator of ojai wild actually sent me another little vial and this is their most recent iteration and so i'm going to compare the two because she said that the newest one is really, really green and a little bit more vibrant because of all the rain that they got. So let's see. Yeah, so they're very, very similar to me. I'm sure her nose is probably a little bit more fine-tuned to all the nuances. I would say the newest iteration is probably a little bit more piquant, and I have that word written down with exclamation points as piquant. Whenever I smell pink peppercorn, I always feel like it just has this piquant feeling to it. It's very, very vibrant. But like Anima Mundi, it's not a hyper floral. It really resides in kind of that spice from the pink peppercorn and like that kind of mossy greenness from the oak moss. It's really lovely. I think this is probably my favorite one that Jana does. So if you are a body oil person, a perfume person, this is a great way to experience those two uh, products together with the layering. I just, I really, really love them a lot. So now we're gonna move on to one of my favorite natural perfumers, and that is Lori Stern from Velvet and Sweet Pea. She sent me this really cute um, package with some of her uh, solid perfumes in here. And I'm not gonna talk about all of them. I'm just gonna talk about two of my favorites. And she's so, I love her branding. She sends these, and I almost hate to call it a branding because that just sounds so impersonal. It's just her style and, and I love it. And so the first one I'm gonna talk about is Mystery de Voile. It's French, I'm certainly not pronouncing it correctly. So she gives you these little cards describing what's in her perfumes. This is the little solid that she sent me. I think you can see that. I just love this one so much. There's lemon, Italian blood orange, lemon myrtle, osmanthus, which is one of my absolute favorites. Um, if you haven't uh, heard me talk about this before, you're not familiar with the scent of osmanthus. It definitely has like a peachy apricotty smell that I just find heavenly. There's also jasmine, orris, and sandalwood in here. This, unlike the other two that I was just talking about being more like the Ojai Wild and the Sigil being more like herbal and aromatic, this one is definitely heady and it's very citrusy and very juicy. So 
I, I adore this one. I'm always a huge fan of sandalwood and osmanthus being together, especially with like the jasmine and a little bit of that um, citrus from the blood orange and the lemon myrtle. It's, I really love what Lori does and she's just such a fabulous person. Uh, the other one I wanted to talk about is the, where is it? Is the Flame Brocade. This is the card for this one. Again, just really sweet and just very romantic and old fashioned in the design, which I really appreciate. So let's get to this one. Yeah, Flame Brocade. This is what it looks like. And in here we have black pepper, antique Ceylon cinnamon. I don't know if I'm saying that right, Ceylon, C-E-Y-L-O-N, but it's just, oh, it's just an amazing cinnamon in here. Italian blood orange, Indian tuberose, another favorite of mine is tuberose, plumeria, which is oh, another huge favorite of mine. There's vanilla, frankincense, and sandalwood in here. Um, to me, this feels like a very beautiful floral that is vintage yet modern. Um, the cinnamon in here, like I was mentioning, is just really rich and velvety and you don't really see cinnamon too much in perfumes i think i've mentioned that before so i'm always attracted to perfumes that have cinnamon in them but yeah this is just a very lovely perfume it's i feel like it's very appropriate for spring just very floral like i said kind of has a little bit of that vintage vibe but is very modern for today so I, I really love this one a lot and i highly recommend checking out Lori's website if you are interested in what she does she just creates gorgeous um, perfumes as well as these solids so definitely go check her out okay so the next brand i want to talk about is rue saint james i had never heard of them before they contacted me a while back uh, to review their perfumes and I looked at their website and it looked very intriguing so I went ahead and said yes I would love to review them so they sent me a couple of these boxes really lovely of their sampler set and they have roll-on oils that's what is in here and then they also have a set of sprays which are the same perfume they just come in two different forms I do want to mention real quickly that Krista the perfumer sent me a note there's a, there's two of them that do contain aroma chemicals so they're not 100 percent natural and those two are 1920 and then caros and that's spelled c-a-r-u-s so those are the two perfumes that are not 100 percent natural but i like how she you know has confirmed that so the two that i'm going to talk about are my favorites from the group i think it would just be way too long for me to try to describe all of them and the first one i'm going to mention is ozone so in the sampler there is a card to describe each fragrance in the box. And ozone, it has bergamot in it, yuzu, lavender, and musk. It's very refreshing, it's very summery, just perfect for this time of year or whenever you're in a hot place. And in my notes, I wrote down that it just would be beautiful for an evening outdoor party. Um, it just kind of gives you like that gin and tonic sort of feeling. And it's a very well-balanced lavender. It has that sparkling citrus, I think, which kind of tempers that lavender note, which can sometimes be a little, a little overwhelming. It, that can smell like soap or a cleaner, you know, it kind of has those connotations. But this one is really well-balanced. So I think if you like lavender, you're looking for a bright, summery uh, lavender fragrance, I would definitely check out Ozone from Rue St. James. And then the other one I want to talk about from Rue St. James is Vesta. And I don't think I showed you what these look like. These are really cute little sprayer, uh, sprayer vials. Just a really great way to experience the line. And Vesta has cypress, heliotrope, and citrus in here. To me, this does kind of smell like a luxury hand soap, uh, which sometimes is not a great thing, but in this case, it is a great thing. I really love the scent. So I wrote down in my notes that it's kind of soapy, kind of powdery. It has a, it's floral with a hint of vanilla. In the dry down, the heliotrope really shows its marzipan slash kind of almond scent to it that I personally really, really like. It just feels very perfect for spring. And I do think actually that uh, when I wrote these notes, I was writing about the roll-on of the Vesta. In the spray, it doesn't feel quite as, as soapy to me. Maybe there is a little bit of a difference of what's going on between the sprays and the oils. But overall, I think this is a really lovely line. Let me show you one more time the label so that you can really see that there, Rue St. James. And of course, I will link their website below. So the last perfume that I'm going to mention is by Red Flower. This is a roll-on perfume, and it is called Guayac. 
And I'm not exactly sure why it's called Guayac because for me, this fragrance is all about the orange and it is, it is just a stunner. I love it. It just evokes such a, a sunny, summery vibe to me. It's like if you had an orange and you were grating it and you were, you know, have like orange zest, that scent flowing throughout your kitchen. That is what it smells like to me. And it's just so deeply bright and citrusy and pure. And I just absolutely love it. And what I did was I didn't purchase this in San Francisco, but whenever I go to San Francisco, I always take this perfume with me because for whatever reason, I just wanted to link this scent with San Francisco. And now I do. So whenever I wear it, I always think of just like beautiful, bright, sunny, glorious days in San Francisco. So I have such a nice connection with this particular scent. But if you're looking, if you like citrus, you like orange, you like that zesty orange feeling, I highly recommend this. It's just, it's just beautiful. I love it. So that does it for this perfume roundup. I feel like I kind of flew through it. I didn't want it to be too long. So if you have any specific questions about any of these, please let me know if you have any questions about the box walla and how this particular box is working. Just let me know, ask me any questions you have down below. But of course I will be linking to all of these and then in particular, the Boxwalla slash um, sigil scent collaboration. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.